Welcome to Monster Hunter Rise, I'm Alex, and I'm going to be highlighting some of the more important things you really need to know, maybe could have missed, or are just plain old fun to do. I'm going to bounce back and forth between beginner and advanced tips as I go through this to hopefully make this a useful resource for newcomers to the series and those who have been playing for a while. I have 18 of these bad boys to get through in the shortest amount of your time as possible, so let's just dive right on in. First, some items like bombs can be used more quickly if you check them in the air during a wire dash. Make sure to be mashing B right after you throw these to hopefully dodge that explosion that often likes to hit you. Some endemic life items work faster while airborne as well, so play around with other items you can haphazardly hurl at the ground instead of slowly placing them while at foot. It's highly likely that one of your two equipped silkbind abilities have invulnerability frames, which are usually in the startup of the attack animation. Figure out which Silkbind attacks have this to completely power straight through oncoming attacks while often maintaining the offensive. This is a very important part of Ryze's combat mechanics, and your Hunter's notes will sometimes even indicate which abilities have this feature. After wire dashing into a wall, you might be seeing yourself do this premature flip off. Instead, after wire dashing at a surface, make sure you're holding down the sprint input which will allow you to run much farther up the walls. You can also shift directions during this to do some sweet hardcore parkour. You will periodically see echo bats flying around which will turn red when a monster is nearby. If you can get a monster to pass through these, they will adhere to them. Although hitting them yourself has no effect, if any other monster damages them, they will violently explode causing extra damage. While wyvern riding, you might want to run around sticking these onto your monster to then let another monster hit you to whittle down even more of your health. Even if it's not a weapon you're familiar with, use the Insect Glaive for easily exploring the maps by utilizing its incredible jumping power. By using the Glaive's ZR plus B vault ability in conjunction with the ZL plus X Silkbind vault ability while in the air, you can navigate to higher areas with ease. This is a great weapon to throw on you when you're casually out finding stuff during an expedition tour. I guess you could also use it to kill monsters too. If you use the in-game camera function to snap the best photo of all time, but are disappointed with the limited squared aspect ratio, don't worry. If you go into the Switch's main photo gallery, the full frame image will be awaiting you in there. Now you can go get internet famous by posting cool poses of fantasy video game characters. Whenever you see a pop-up saying a lucky life has been found, look around or bring up your detailed map for a nearby owl or crow. Depending on the type, this will either improve your quest reward money or your quest reward blue currency points earned. The freebie first aid meds you get out of the blue chest at the start of a hunt can be converted to a first aid med plus. These heal for much more, so always bring along some honey, but not a max 10 since you still want to be able to gather these during the quest. You can even set a shortcut to the radial menu to craft these on the fly, but make sure to set it to one at a time. If you convert all of them and then end up not drinking them all because you're an uber pro, those honeys you used will have gone to waste. The wyvern ride mechanic where you cowboy onto monsters is one of the most vital things to utilize correctly if you like gathering more parts for monsters, which you should since it's pretty much 100% the goal of the game. Whenever there is any monster on monster action, they break off easily collectible bonus parts which can drastically increase your overall material haul after a hunt. Even if it's not the main monster of the quest, it's worth taking the 30 or so seconds to run the target monster around the map, which by the way can also gather you more of those stat boosting endemic life along the way, to then take them over to any other monster to break off some quick parts from them as well. Also, each monster has an alternate back plus X or back plus A attack, and some actually come out faster than the standard attacks, which might just make you more effective in kaiju combat. While in town or at a camp, you'll want to set your favorite loadout of items to a preset build. This way, every time you return to your chest, you can simply just activate this loadout. This will not only automatically restock all of your main items, but also deposit any of the extra things you gained during the last time out. Since you speed around on your canine companion quite a lot in this game, you might not want to always be holding down R to sprint. If you change the dash setting to left stick in or R, then you can just click in the stick once to toggle sprint on or off. You'll probably still want to use the R input for combat however, since it's more reliable when a lot of other inputs are going on. 
In your hunter's notes, for each creature's log, you can press Y to go into their picture settings. This will show you any photos you just so happen to have taken with that creature in the frame. You can also change the default art of the creature to your own beauty shot, which really has no purpose unless you're trying to desperately turn this into Monster Hunter Snap. Each map has one or two subcamps you can unlock. After you find their somewhat hidden initial location, you'll need to complete an associated side quest before they become active. You can fast travel to these camps from the detailed map view to restock your items, switch out gear, eat a meal, or just chill out for a bit with your pals. If you're standing stationary to sharpen your weapon during combat, you're somewhat doing it wrong. Instead, just call over your pupper or hold A near them and sharpen or pop consumables while mounted. This has a much slimmer chance of the monster being able to hit you. By bringing up the large detailed map, you can sift through all available collectibles and even pinpoint specific types. This will take anything you pick to show up on your smaller detailed mini-map by holding L, or you can set that view to be your default. You can also set the detailed map to highlight all endemic life, which will help you gain even more of those delicious stat-boosting birds. Whenever you see patches of greenery that looks like this, give it a good smack to reveal various endemic life hidden within. This probably also applies in real life. If you're aiming to capture a monster, you'll need to wait until you see a blue icon over them on the minimap or look for their limping animation. Instead of trapping them and then tranquilizing them twice, you can actually tranquilize them first and then as soon as they hit that trap they'll be automatically captured. Not super useful, but does make you look more confident. When you're on your doggo while sprinting, you can initiate a drift by pressing ZL. You don't actually have to Tokyo Drift this out, and if you just simply tap ZL while pressing forward, you can continually use the speed boost you gain from coming out of this. Yes, I know you played Mario Kart. Unlike how I'm cinematically capturing for this video with the view zoomed way in, you'll probably want to head into the options menu to zoom the camera all the way out. Getting those big ol' monsters fully into view during battle is more important than being up close and personal with your hunter. And those are all the things I wanted to show off today, which I hadn't already covered in my advanced weapon tips video, except for that insect glaive one, I just like showing off his cool jumping mechanics. If you learned at least one new thing in this video, make sure to let me know which one it was, and if you have a neat tip of your own, post it down there in the comments for everyone else to see. As always, this has been Alex, and thanks for watching Boomstick Gaming.